Look at you. Yeah, you're so dirty. And you're much bigger than last time. Yeah, little stink stink. Look at how big you are. <laughs> oh my goodness, you're so muddy. Come here. This is going to be fun. Look at you. Look at you. Look at that. You ready to go? Okay, come on. Come on. Let's go, buddy buddies. what's going on youtube and welcome back to my channel if you've been here before thank you for returning if you are new to the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on those post notifications so you are notified every single time i drop a video and you don't miss not one video everybody in here smash that like button share this video and drop a comment down below during the video after the video before the video whatever you feel let me know what you think let me know what you like about the video let me know what you want to see next you saw by the title and the thumbnail we got a good one so let's get straight into this groom also you guys make sure you are watching the ads all the way through I know some of them can be a little lengthy but watch them as much as you can as long as you can as best as you can it helps to support this channel it helps to support me it helps to allow me to do this on more of a full-time basis in the future but with that being said let's get back into the groom Okay, everybody, this is Boober. Oh my gosh, look at that dirt. <laughs> this is Boober, and he is supposed to be a toy poodle. He is about, I want to say he's like five months right now. He's older than that right now, as opposed to in this video, because this was maybe two months back, maybe two months yeah about two months back this video was taken so he's a little bit older now but this is his first big boy haircut he's had i want to say two or three puppy trims prior to this because when he first came in he was a challenge boober did not want to listen and he absolutely hated grooming but that was his very first visit his very first visit he was very difficult now he has a sister named puddin and puddin was perfect when she first came in i mean that was the most chillest dog i've ever groomed well chillest puppy that i've ever groomed i mean nothing phased her but boober was on the opposite end of the spectrum he was completely off the chain <laughs> A very sweet dog nonetheless, but absolutely opposite end of the spectrum from Putin. He was a completely different dog from her. It was just to see the two differ. And she said that at home, they are completely different as well. Now, as you can see, Boober is extremely dirty. And I mean extremely dirty. I had to scrub him three times. I washed him twice in the whitening shampoo, the brightening shampoo by Hydra. And then the third time I washed him in a protein shampoo by Quadrupid. He was extremely dirty. Now, Boober actually never comes in like this. He's never this dirty when he comes in. He's always bright, white, and clean and kept up. But he went to her dad's house and you know when they go to the dad's house it's kind of all bets are off it's basically you're a dog you can do whatever you want and he felt like he wanted to play in some mud and he had a great time <laughs> he had a great time in the mud he absolutely loved it but um when she came to pick him up i was like wow he was really dirty today and she was like girl you have no idea she said when i picked him up from my dad's house i was so shocked because you know i don't keep him in this condition and she really doesn't so it was so funny to see it but as a groomer i love when dogs come in this dirty because it actually shows the owner how good of a bath they actually get how clean they get and how well we do our job so i appreciate dogs that come in really dirty or dogs that are coming in that are molting and their their fur is like tuffed in their coat and all that i just, i love it i love doing that because it's fulfilling and you actually get to see your results so it's funny his coat looks like a lightish tan wait till you see what he looks like when he's on the table so you see what he looked like before and he has his coat has like a little tint of tan to it you would think that that was his actual coat color but it's not just wait 
and see what he looks like when he gets on the table but with that being said yes like i said he gets probably one of the craziest haircuts i've ever done on a dog he gets the same haircut that his sister got but i didn't get a chance to record pudding so i wanted to record boober especially because he was so dirty so y'all can actually see why i scrub my dogs the way that i scrub my dogs because it really gets them deep like deeply clean and i personally love it i enjoy the bath it's like my zen time <laughs> but he gets a really different haircut now when i said he's supposed to be a toy poodle i mean that he's supposed to be a toy poodle keyword on supposed to be because i explained to her i'm like he does not look like a toy poodle he's too big to be a toy poodle he doesn't act like a po he nothing about him says poodle honestly everything screams doodle and we all in the shop think he is a little mini munchkin doodle or what they want to call micro doodles uh, there's so many different types of doodles it's not even funny but he to me and to everyone looks like a doodle so that's what we think he is we think that some breeders now i'm going to say this and i'm going to be very honest some breeders will tell you what you want to hear so you can buy that dog i don't know if this was the case but i know there are a lot of breeders out there that are like that so if you are looking for let's say you're looking for a havanese and the dog resembles a havanese they're going to tell you that's a purebred havanese and you're going to walk around and say this is my purebred havanese when in reality you got a yorkie poo so it's just we don't really know what he is but we know for sure he's not a toy poodle his face is too wide to be any type of poodle especially a toy poodle toy poodles their face is very narrow and his is not but we love him just the same as every other dog i don't want y'all to think that i'm saying you know he's not a toy poodle so some people should look at him differently no because let me just say there are some crazy comments i i don't think i was ever ready for the comments that i get some of them i'm just like wow okay <laughs> but i'm not saying that we all love him just the same he's a sweetheart we love boober he is the sweetest little thing and just like you saw in the beginning we let the dogs run around the shop not at the same time because we don't know who's reactive to who but when we're pulling a dog out we'll just let, let the cage open they'll just run around the shop get a little play time and then we'll get to grooming because a lot of people say that i don't show affection towards the dogs which is not true actually i do show affection in some of my videos but during the groom is not playtime and that's the tone we have to set for dogs when we're grooming them that the grooming process while you're on the table when you're hooked up when i'm doing anything on your body that's not playtime so you don't get to jump around and try and distract me from grooming it's not me being it's not me being mean it's not the groomer being mean it's just what it is because if they associate being on the table with playtime getting a haircut on them is going to be very difficult so on the table is serious time bath time is serious time when you're on the floor running around all bets are off have at it have fun do what you got to do but the reason why you see a lot of groomers that are straight faced when they're grooming is because they have to set that tone for the tables for the dogs to understand you cannot jump around you cannot bite at the scissors you cannot bite at me even if it's just playing you can't do that because you can get injured so if there's ever a video that i put up and i am being super stern with the dog it's because the dog has to understand this is not play time this is serious time you can get injured if you're doing the wrong thing so dogs get affection all the time off the camera i mean we'll take a random dog off the kennel and just hold the dog for no reason at all because you look scared or you look sad or if somebody goes to the bathroom in their crate and we go in there to clean it up and the dog kind of like please pick me up we'll pick them up hold them for a little bit just kind of get them to relax and then we'll put them back in the crate so i don't want y'all to think just because we don't film that part it's not happening we don't film it because we don't think to film it 
we're just showing affection to dogs so we're not like oh wait let's go grab the camera so people can see us show affection to dogs no we don't do that if i record something it's because i think it's cute so like in the beginning when boober was running around i thought that was adorable so that's why i recorded it for my purposes not to upload it i mean yes it is cute for y'all to see it but usually if i record a dog playing like that it's because i want to look back at it because i think it's absolutely adorable and i don't mind sharing it but that is why you see a lot of groomers being straight face on the table because it is the time to teach the dog or the puppy that this is serious mode and you need to behave which kind of brings me to my discussion of topic today today i am going to be talking about the pros and cons of being a dog groomer or just working with dogs in general but that is going to be later on in the video right now i'm going to be talking about a little bit of other things and then we'll hop into that Okay, so just a little bit of story about Boober and his sister Puddin. So Boober and Puddin is the woman's sister's dogs. So she, I believe, lives out of the country. And she wanted her sister to pick up the dogs in the States because the type of poodle she wanted, they don't sell where she is. Now, again, like I said... Boober does not look like a purebred poodle and neither does Puddin. They both look like mini doodles and we all think the same thing in the salon. Now, of course, we can never be sure because we don't know what the parents look like and we cannot perform a DNA test. The owner can, but we cannot. But Boober and Puddin is her sister's dogs and she lives out of the country and she wants a particular haircut on her two dogs because she well i don't really want to say it because i don't want to give it away i want y'all to see what he looks like when he's done and i promise you this is the most interesting haircut i've ever seen and i don't want y'all in the comments saying oh i don't like that you should have did this i really feel like you should have done this this haircut was not my choice it was not my choice at all it was 100% the owner's choice because she has her own way of doing things and how she wants her dogs to look. And I'm not talking about the person that dropped them off, but I'm talking about the person that lives out of the country. She has her own way of doing things and how she wants her dogs to look. So don't come at her in the comments. She has her own thing. Don't bash the haircut. Don't say, you know, whatever just understand this is what the owner wants because she has a different vision in mind
so before I start on his haircut I'm just gonna be doing a little bit of the light work so his paw pads nails I do believe I do his sanitary but I'm not really sure again I as I'm editing this I'm re-watching the video so I don't really know what I do <laughs> I guess I could probably skip ahead and see if I do it but I'll just let you guys figure it out <laughs> but I'm going to be doing clean feet on him so I'm going to be explaining clean feet while I'm doing it so if you guys are trying to work on clean feet at home or do clean feet on your dog at home I can walk you through it so how I start off clean feet is by doing the paw pads first and what I'll do is as you can see I'm going in between the toes and I'm lightly scooping right next to the paw pad so I'm just scooping off that bottom edge part of the toe with the blade that I'm doing the paw pads with so what I'm doing the paw pads with is a 30 blade and that is going to get the paw pads as short as you can get them if you use a 30 blade at home be very careful because you can easily nick the dog on the paw if you don't know what you're doing or if you're too heavy handed with it so i just lightly scoop it and i lightly go next to their toes as i'm cleaning it out to make the clean feet a little easier when i'm doing it it makes the top part a lot easier and a lot quicker when i'm doing it <laughs>
okay so now for his clean feet I'm gonna go in with a 10 blade so like I said I did a 30 blade for his paw pads and on the sides of his toes and then for the finishing part of the clean feet I'm gonna go in with a 10 blade and just get the rest of the hair that's there and I'm gonna go up to right past maybe a little past like dogs don't have knuckles but like that top bone I'm not really sure what the bone is called I really should look that up and see but I'm gonna just go a little bit past that bone kind of like where the foot like arches and curves a bit right there if you're doing proper clean feet you don't really want to go any higher than that you kind of want to stop right where the largest pad is on the back of their feet so you don't want to you don't really want to go any higher than the largest pad on the bottom of their foot now if the owner asks for clean feet to be a little bit higher then that's when you go up higher and you kind of create almost like you're shaving out like a boot on the dog if that makes sense but for proper clean feet you don't want to go any higher than that
okay so on his body I did a four blade on his body and on his legs I did five eighths of an inch on his legs because she wants longer legs on them not necessarily a lamb cut she just wants longer legs on them so a short body with longer legs and on his face well she didn't want anything off of his face she literally just wanted me to scoop the eyes and that's it so his face was left as is and that was it and like i said that was the craziest haircut i've ever done on a dog because she was very precise about the body the legs and the clean feet but she did not want me to touch the face she didn't want me to touch the beard the top knot nothing because she grows the top of the head out into a ponytail and then she likes the face round like a teddy bear but she likes to cut the face herself so when i first did Puddin', which is boober's sister i trimmed the visor back a little bit because that's what you generally do with a puppy cut you trim the visor back so it's not in the face and she did not want me to do that she wanted she was very clear and very specific about me not doing that just scoop the eyes out brush the face brush the ears and leave it as is so that is the haircut that he is getting if you have any questions feel free to drop it down below like i said this is what the owner wanted please do not bash her in the comments do not say oh you should have cut it i still think you should have did this i still think you should have did that there was no way i could do that and not upset the customer and with dog grooming it's literally about what the customer wants unless the dog is in conditions where you have to shave the dog down Especially for his very first group, his first puppy trim. Oh my goodness.
Okay, as I stated, we're going to be talking about the pros and cons of being a dog groomer. And I'm not going to get into every single last one of them. I'm going to do two pros and two cons. And the reason why I picked two pros and two cons is because they're going to be the two biggest pros and the two biggest cons because a lot of the pros and cons kind of run into each other but i'm going to be doing two pros two cons so let's get into it okay so the first pro i'm going to start with the pro the first pro of being a dog groomer is i feel like you all should know this but it's the dogs it's obviously the dogs <laughs> you get to build a bond with the dogs and understand their personalities and understand their wants and needs and just understand the dog individually and the dog gets to build a bond with you so they know who they're coming to what to expect when they're coming to get groomed they're building trust with you they understand they're not going to be hurt and it's it's like it's the best feeling in the world because dealing with dogs is almost like dealing with kids it's like you know how you can tell like a kid really just loves you it's just how they look at you it's the same way with dogs how they just love you they get so excited when they come to see you they're bouncing around their whole body's wiggling their tails wiggling their ears are all everywhere Every, the dog is just generally happy to see you and it is literally the best feeling in the world because it makes your heart melt for them because you know that they know that y'all love each other and you love them and you'll never do anything to hurt them and that really is for me i think the biggest pro of being a dog groomer is building a bond with the dogs and building a relationship with the dogs and just understanding the dogs and getting to cuddle with the dogs and and play with the dogs and pet the dogs it's just it's really all of that is just the biggest pro ever of being a dog groomer okay so now i'm going to start with a con a con so one of the biggest cons of being a dog groomer is everybody feeling like they can tell you how to do your job and thinking they know how to do your job better than you know how to do your job and that kind of goes hand in hand with angry customers so if a customer comes in then their dog is a solid mat they will get livid with us when we tell them that we have to shave their dog oh i don't want my dog shaved my dog my dog doesn't need to be shaved what mats and then you point out the mats oh that's not a mat you, you can brush that out aren't you a professional don't you know how to do your job that is probably one of the biggest cons of being a dog groomer is people think you are magicians they want you to do the inevitable for their dog when they didn't even do it for their dog and this is not me judging customers let me just put that out there very clearly i'm not judging customers but speaking for groomers and for all groomers it is the most frustrating thing for a customer to tell you you can brush out my dog even though i didn't brush out my dog demanding that we do something that's going to hurt the dog as opposed to doing something that's safer for the dog now it's one thing if it has slight matting or whatever now i've talked in several videos that there are certain types of matting that you can brush out i'm talking about the matting where the dog has been in the rain and it's like glued to the skin that type of matting people are really in denial about stuff like that and that is probably one of the biggest cons trying to explain to an owner hey I'm not saying you did a poor job with your dog. I understand life happens, but I'm just letting you know your dog has to be shaved. And people, when I tell you I've seen so many different things when it comes to matting. I had a woman cry. She told me I ruined her day. I had some lady curse one of my groomers out. It's just, it was, that right there is like a tick for groomers. Because we really do our best for dogs and it's one of the most underappreciated jobs you really can have because everybody thinks that they can do your job better than you can when in reality you're bringing your dog to me so can you really do my job better than me because if you did you wouldn't be bringing your dog to me 
and again i'm not bashing anybody i'm just this right here is one of the biggest ticks that a groomer has about being a dog groomer is it's that <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to do another pro. So, another pro of being a dog groomer is... I mean, I'm going to put two of them together because I just can't do two. I really can't. So, the two I'm going to put together, one is making the dogs look absolutely adorable. And the appreciation that you get from customers. The understanding that you get from customers. Because not every customer is a bad customer. And not every customer is that customer. But... The appreciation you get when people really actually get it and understand when they get it and understand what you had to go through to get your get their dog to look like what they want that that right there is one of the biggest pros because it's it's just because you don't see it that often when it comes to dog grooming you don't see it so much when people really understand like oh my god thank you I, I see you did a really good job you did a hard job and then they tip you for what you do that that's another thing I'm just going to throw in there is when customer appreciates what you do and what you did for the dog and they actually tip you for it now everything is not about money but it just shows the groomer that you really appreciated what we did and you went above and beyond to show us that because i've had a customer tell me oh i think that everybody should tip i think it's so wrong when people don't tip and that same customer will not tip me so it's groomers i'm not going to say we look for tips but we really really appreciate them so if you are one of those customers that don't tip your groomer tip your groomer trust me when I say it really shows us that you appreciate us and our hard work and the time we took out to really work with your dog and get the haircut that you want even if it is not the haircut that you want but they did what was best and was safest for your dog show your groomer that you still appreciate that you it may not be the haircut that you want and you may be upset in the moment but understand we did what was best for your dog in the long run we did what was best for your dog for that grooming appointment and future grooming appointments we helped your dog understand that okay not every grooming appointment is a bad one yes okay we can dematch you here but every time you come to grooming we're going to be tugging and pulling at you we're not going to do that because that is going to make your dog think that every aspect of grooming is bad so always show appreciation to your groomers because when i tell you we truly truly appreciate it we really do and we brag about our customers that spoil us like we absolutely love it we really love the appreciation that y'all show us and it definitely doesn't go unnoticed so if you can just show your groomer that you appreciate them however that means for you just let them know that you appreciate them it doesn't necessarily have to be a tip we do appreciate that because it does help go to our bills or whatever but just showing your groomer that you appreciate them trust me when i say we absolutely love it and it doesn't go unnoticed so the last con that i want to talk about and this is probably the biggest one for groomers um i'm pretty sure i can say for groomers this is the biggest one the biggest con is the biggest misconception that everybody has about groomers everybody thinks that we just sit around and play with dogs all day we do not <laughs> we do not sit around and play with dogs all day when i say i wish that was the case i truly do wish that was the case i really wish we played with dogs all day but we don't we honestly we fight with dogs all day <laughs> it is the exact opposite we are fighting with dogs all day day because there's always going to be a dog that doesn't want something done to them there's a dog that's going to be snapping at you there's a dog that's going to be barking at you it's literally like going back and forth with a toddler we argue with dogs all day and we talk to dogs like how we talk to humans we are sarcastic with them we get smart with them because dogs get smart with us they be growling at us and and snarling and all of that and we don't play with dogs all day <laughs> we are human pooper scoopers we clean up pee poop anal glands everything we make we basically work at a barbershop because we sweep hair all all of that so 
don't get me wrong the job is fun it has its perks it has a lot of perks but it also has some downs it has a good bit of downs as well so playing with dogs all day is definitely not what we do i mean we get bit <laughs> oh boy do we get bit we get bit more than a lot of people really understand at some point there's a there's a dog trying to bite almost every day it's like an anomaly for you to have a day of dogs that do not try and bite you somebody's going to try and bite somebody's going to snarl somebody's going to growl somebody's going to lift the corner of their lip up to show you that they are not happy with what's going on so yeah as much as i would love to say and help y'all out and say that we play with dogs all day we really do not play with dogs all day it would be nice when I worked at a pet's hotel, that's when I played with dogs all day. For grooming, no. Okay, everybody, that's going to wrap up the pros and cons of being a dog groomer. If you guys have any more questions for me, feel free to drop them in the comments. I will answer them as best as I can. I'm trying to get to all the comments. They're just coming in so fast these days it's when i catch up with the comments 20 more come and then i get those knocked out and then another 40 come so i'm trying to catch them catch up to the comments as quickly as i can as best as i can if you guys would want me to do like a live video go live let me know in the comments where i can talk to you all about dog grooming and different things like that and i can answer any questions that y'all may have it'll probably end up being on a weekend if i do do it but drop it down in the comments and let me know if that's something you would be interested in
Okay, so now I'm putting the finishing touches on Boober and we're going to take a quick flashback look at his before. He was so dirty and this is his after. He is all bright white and clean in his natural color. Yes, I know this is an interesting haircut, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you guys smash that like button, share this video, drop a comment down below, do all that fancy YouTube stuff. I love you guys. Train your dogs for grooming. Make sure you watch every video straight through. Watch those ads. Enjoy the videos. I'll catch you in the next one. Love you guys.